If you want to learn how to improve your aim and much more, you've come to the right place. Because I've compiled a list of 11 tips for you that, if you don't already know, are guaranteed to help you out in Taco. Hello gamers, my name is Lies, and let's just get straight to it. The first point I want to mention is that dying isn't only a bad thing, and you'll die a lot in Tarkov. It's the nature of the game, and there's no way around it, even for the players who have spent thousands of hours in here. So get used to it, and try to find a way to use it to your advantage. I know there's broken mechanics, insane AI, and a variety of other reasons you could suddenly die. Hello there. But that's just part of the fun, right? Of course, the goal is to reduce the number of deaths, which usually happens naturally for players over time. But you can help it along by attempting to analyze your deaths, determining what went wrong, and remembering that for the next time you find yourself in a similar situation. Recording your gameplay so you can watch it later is very useful. I always do that after every death, unless I'm completely sure what I did wrong or what happens since I died. If I have any doubts, I'll watch it back and figure out where I should have played it differently. There are several methods for recording your gameplay, Outplayed uh, is a great one. Next, we've got the right hand peak, which some of you may be familiar with. PvP in Escape from Tarkov is pretty much built around this mechanic, and if you don't know about it, I guarantee you can blame some of your deaths on peaking the wrong way. Because have a look at this, there is a left hand peak on the left side, and a right hand peak on the right side. You can clearly see the difference. And now check out what it looks like from their point of view. As you can see, they can see the same thing, but there is a significant difference in how much of their character is visible. If you're wondering why this happens, it's easiest to explain like this. Imagine you're in his brain looking out through only his right eye, and because he's holding his gun in his right hand, you have more vision when peeking to the right than to the left. Always look for a right hand peek guys, and if you can't get one, you have to try and reposition yourself to get one. Now to assist you in getting those perfect right hand peaks, I really recommend that you go and change your lean key bindings to opposites, so that lean left is on E and lean right is on Q, because that will make it much easier for you to move while leaning, even if it takes some getting used to. You can do the same for your slow lean binds to keep it consistent, but that's entirely up to you. Being able to control your hipfire will help you win a lot of fights. And there's a few different ways you can improve your hipfire in this game by quite a lot. Let's start off with tactical devices. Because check this out. This spray is without a laser activated. And this is with a laser activated. You can clearly see the difference in the spread of the bullets. Now we can combine that with docking, which is extremely useful as well, but it's very situational. Because have a look at this for example. The recoil pattern while I'm standing up and the recoil pattern while I'm crouching. Now I like to use crouching a lot, especially in close quarter situations. For example, if you're pushing a hallway and you know there's someone at the end, I'd probably throw a nade first to give myself some cover. Maybe I'd push halfway up the hallway and then duck in an off position, expecting the enemy to peek because they'll have heard me pushing. Now this tactic takes some getting used to, because a lot of the time when hip firing, you want to stay as mobile as possible, which means you can't crouch because you don't want to be caught in an awkward position, but it can be very powerful when used correctly. When loading into a raid, you should always have an objective in mind. This might help to reduce some of that frustration that comes with dying for the fifth time while attempting to complete that same task. What I mean is that before you load into a raid, you should have decided whether you want to do a PvP run, a loot run, a task run, or whatever kind of run you want to do. This means that if you're on a task run, you don't go around picking up loot. Instead, you focus on completing your task and then getting out of that raid alive, moving away from any gunshots you hear, and generally being cautious so that you have a better chance of survival. Now, if you're on a PvP run, obviously you go for all the fights you can find and you keep looking for gunshots until you can't find any more players in the raid. Then you can reset and go again. Some people even leave the loot behind, which can make sense because going around looting sometimes results in death and keeping your loadout might be the better play. But I'm usually greedy and no way, there's no way I'm leaving loot behind if I feel even slightly safe to loot that shit. But my point is, set a goal before you start the raid and stick to it. This one has saved me several times, and I'm sure it'll get fixed eventually. However, for now, when you're healing yourself in-game, whichever heal that might be, uh, it could even be a stim, which only takes two seconds. If you open your inventory and right-click on a magazine that is full, and then hit install, it will reload into your gun instantly, with no animation. 
If you are forced to use a med during a fight, being able to reload at the same time as healing yourself can really surprise your opponent if they are expecting you to have an empty magazine after just unloading for example. This trick you can use to make healing with heavy bleeds a little easier. To begin with, open your settings and navigate to key binding. Scroll down to the ones that say weapon slots 4 and 5. Now you want to bind both of those keys to 4, which will prompt you to select a key mechanism. And it needs to be set like this. You want to have press on the original 4 key and you want to have release on the 5 key. And the game is really good with this, so it will prioritize for you. Now to bind your mats, you hover over them with your mouse. You press and hold 4 on the heavy bleed mat. Then you hover over your heel and you release the 4 key. This way it binds both items. Easy. This is also a key binding trick that will make dealing with weapon jams and misfires much easier. So you go back into settings and you find key bindings again. Scroll down until you find inspect weapon and bind it to your preferred key. Now you set it to press, then find fixed weapon malfunction and bind it to the same key, but set that to release. Now I could be completely wrong about this and if so, I'm a complete moron. However, if your weapon jams or misfires, you must first inspect it to determine the source of the problem before you can repair it. This keybind allows you to do both with a single key. However, you can't simply press it quickly or spam it. Otherwise, you'll end up only inspecting your weapon. Instead, you must press and hold it for a second or two while your guy is inspecting the weapon. Once he's done with that, you release and then he will fix the malfunction. I mentioned it before, but using grenades can be very useful. There are various grenades with different fuse timers and it is important to understand them. The longest fuse is 5 seconds on the M67 down to the impact nade, which, you guessed it, it goes off on impact when it decides to work, of course. Now, I prefer to use the grenades with the longer fuses to gain a better position, while the ones with shorter fuses are better for killing people. There's also flashbangs in the game, but fuck that shit, I never use them. Knowing when to move and when to sit still can make or break a fight. Tarkov's movement is a big topic, so I'll probably only scratch the surface here. When you're running around, try to always sprint from cover to cover, but keep an eye on your stamina. Ideally, you never want it to drop below 50%. You can always keep running if you start taking fire. Now, when you get to a place of cover, don't stand completely still. Keep walking in a small circle, so it'll be harder to land a headshot on you. However, if you're in a building or somewhere behind hard cover, take a second to listen instead after sprinting up. If you give them the opportunity, people will frequently take a small step or make some sort of audio cue to let you know they are there. Holding the W and Shift key may not always be the best options. There are many situations where you are better off holding an angle such as if you have a better spot or more information than your opponent. Now this is all situational of course and something that you will have to learn with practice. Actually, I'd like to talk a little bit more about movement because I'd like to briefly mention flanking. Flanking is an extremely useful thing in this game. And if you get into a fight that does not end immediately, making the flank is almost always preferable to sitting in the same position for 10 minutes. I actually made a 5 minutes video on the subject and you can find that right here on the screen. Now, I hope this was useful guys and thank you for watching.